この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tia Boo and I am here for more Viking stuff. We are on Vinland Saga episode 14. It's a little bit later than it usually is when I get started on this, but there were some other things I had to do this morning, so now we're getting to it. Sweet. Uh, last time on Vinland, we found out some very interesting things about Ashalad, or Askalad, whatever you want to say. I'm going to go with Ashalad because that's how the Japanese VAs say it. Uh, <laughs> um, found out some very interesting things about him and his, his opinion on the Danes and、uh, how he may just be using them as, as tools, as means to an end, which is kind of intriguing, kind of interesting. Um, definitely a lot, of, a lot of interesting discussion happened in the comments and in the Discord over that episode and, and the things that were revealed. And yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. It adds a, a, a layer of depth and a bit of a wrinkle to who is this character and what is he really all about. Finding out about his history and more than anything, his statement about how he feels about the Danes. Very interesting.、Uh, when we ended off the last episode, we were beginning or continuing our long, somber march towards somewhere. I don't actually remember where we're going, but that's fine. We'll figure it out soon enough, I think.、Um, and,、uh, well, I, I don't know a better way to say it, so winter is coming.、Um, would have liked to avoid the meme there. It's getting cold outside. <laughs> It, snow is falling. Think, things are chilly. So I get the feeling this is going to be kind of a difficult march.、Um, we definitely had some, some sort of sober walking toward our graves type of feel in certain of the shots. And yikes, that's a little, that's a little yikesy. So we also had some cool stuff with Knut. Really interested to see how this character develops because, well, when we met him, he was, it was just that pretty boy who nobody gave any respect to. And he finally kind of stood up for himself just a little bit after being poked and poked and poked and poked and poked by everyone, but especially Thorfinn. So I'm interested to seeing this character grow and kind of hoping and feeling and thinking and, and praying that he'll become sort of an interesting leader of, of, of a unique variety. In any case, I think that's all I wanted to say here at the beginning. Let's go ahead and dive on into episode 14 of Vinland Saga. I have the episode up, it is ready to go. It is at zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction video. You can find a picture in picture version with the video up there ish、uh, in the description and a time based version up on YouTube. If you want discussion, that'll be at the end of the timer based version. It won't be on the picture in picture version, so mix and match as you see fit. And if you want to sync up your own copy of the episode with the timer based version, you're more than welcome to do so. Just get it ready because the beep beep timer to count you down is coming at ya. Mmm. Wow, so we went from light snow to full blizzard, eh? What? Thorkel? That's why have you been in this for so long? Oh my god. Cracked and dry. Who is this? I don't know who this is, and she's not in the OP, is she? <sighs> gonna call dead. Gonna, gonna call likable and then dead. We'll see, though. And she's a Christian. Anne. Is this meant to have a parallel to, to, to our introduction to Thorfinn? What does she hide in the hollow? And do nothing. Okay, 
thanks, by the way, for people who explained what the hell that meant, because I didn't get it. But rowing a boat, you go backwards, you can only see what you've already passed. Thank you. I'm going to be on the lookout for Anne in the OP. If she's not in there, I'm calling her dead. We also don't see the priest in the OP, do we? The boys. <laughs> That's so badass. <laughs> Take it off, Thorkel. <laughs> ow, ow! <laughs> Hi, Jeebus. Where did he find a, a place to pray? Or is this before? This is before while he's still a monk. Or still in the monastery. Hmm. More conversations with the priest, are we? Hmm. Hmm, hmm. The boys. Soka. <laughs> glug glug. What about gold? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> Georgia characters? <laughs> I he's saying I, right? But we're going for a Christian brotherhood, right? Hmm. That ship, that ship, indeed he did, oh, these are flat layers. Whoa. Timestamp. Spin. He treated all. Oh.
this change in style. He's had some kind of epiphany. It's probably pretty worth complaining about. more than that. I don't like it, though. You're going to lose a lot of men. Back to back. That's awesome. And... Hans Village. Christian Village. Incoming. It's a good question, little one. That is not a very good answer, little one. But a very realistic one. A useful fairy tale. Again with end times. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that be like 1032? Wow. Hell may be coming to you. And Ashley's line, they're, they've walked through hell and back.
Mhm. Mm. Yeah, what's in the hollow? We still don't get to see it. It's as though she's checking on something in there. The design on it. Ah, uh, she stole. God, the contrast. Temptation. Hell's coming to you. <laughs> Rutro, you should stay quiet. <laughs> Hi, God here. Priest? Everything. Holy shit, Bjorn. This episode is so nuts. Is there a different ED on this? Like, who is directing this shit?
Whose axe was the opening scene and whose blood? This isn't going to go well. Because you won't make it through the day. That's the axe. Fuck, Ashalad. He's going to slaughter them all. Mass grave. And. Is she lucky or unlucky? Because she won't survive the winter on her own. Freezing to death is a... Uh, a way to go. Because of the ring with the waves on it, she'll believe this was her punishment. Go to heaven. Or die because of me. Something a little bit off about that translation. 
It's okay. We'll figure it out later. Is there a listed episode director? Maybe one day there will be. Doki doki shiteru no. Right? Let's hear it again. Doki doki shiteru no. My heart is pounding. Or I'm excited. Choosing to translate it as that, that is, I'm elated. I guess makes sense. It's not the worst that it could be. It's a little bit weird, though. But it would be strange to translate it literally, too. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, well, I thought from near the beginning that Anne was a dead woman. I had it very wrong. Tragic, for sure. Okay, the the thing that stands out to me about the... A lot of things stand out to me about this episode, but the thing that stands out to me more than anything is the planning and direction, um, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that there is somebody else uh, episode directing this episode, because this was a very different... Uh, a very different directorial voice than a lot of the series has been so far. If this was just Yabuta, then the man has gone insane and and is well on his way to becoming a legendary director 
but I feel there's another hand at play here. So I don't know where to give credit, but credit is certainly due here. This is this is an episode where like. Often, often in previous episodes of Vinland Saga, it's been it's been the sum of the parts that makes it watchable or interesting. Where we look at and we go like, "Oh, the backgrounds are really good. The voice acting was really solid. This one piece of animation was really good." Um, and because all these little things were really good, the whole was also really good. And you know, the writing is solid. Whatever, whatever. This is one of those instances where everything sort of blends together, and it's just all good. And that's that's the job of the director, the episode director. So that's where that's where credit for this lies, along with the writing. I assume that this is a, a similarly played out chapter in the manga, but I'm I'm not even talking about the way this is written or the story that is told. I rec- oh geez, sorry. I'll try to fix that in post. Um, oh, we do see her just the once in the OP, and it's right there. Oh. And the shape in the in the aurora is the 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 prow? Bow? Bow is the forward part of the ship. What about the prow? The prow is the forward most part of a ship, of a ship's bow that cuts through the water. And it's the part above the waterline. They are used interchangeably. Okay, so I was right both times. <laughs> um, the the it looks like the the bow of a Viking ship, the the dragon head. Just realized that when I was looking at it here, coming out of the fog. Sorry, I'm sorry for sitting silently. I'm just a little bit taken aback by um, how well executed this entire episode was. This was insane. Our days as of old. Lack of answer. Love between real brothers and then... I thought that this was going the route of, of Christian Brotherhood. Would you have my back on the battlefield? And then we talk about tours. I wanna see I wanna I wanna read through the entire dialogue here. I wanna look at this shot again, for sure. So it angers me. Found that no one had died. I wonder what that was all about. That's what takes him off guard. Is that he didn't kill anyone. A true warrior doesn't need a sword. Live by the sword, die by the sword, perhaps. Doesn't matter, it's it's its own line. Is there a sound effect for this face? Thunk. What was his name? I don't know. A warrior doesn't need a sword. An epiphany. A revelation. And he just sits all night thinking about that line. And all morning. And then we are in a cold hell. Ragnar warns him. Luck is no longer on your side. Any decision you make will not go well for you. And I think he's right. I think this is the beginning and the end for Ashalad. The wind whipping past them. This scene, so dark. With the blizzard passing, 
and their cloaks flapping in the wind back to back, facing away from one another, paths diverging, and again here, so good. And then we open on the family. There's a, a distinct increase in shots like this with the incredible shading and and detail and characteristics of the, the people. Like when we first meet uh, An in the very beginning, the, the thing that stands out about her more than anything is the, the cracked and bloodied hands and the, the chipped and damaged fingernails. These people live a hard life. An impossibly hard life. They scrape by. And a part of that is because they have so many children. She stole a ring. She thought it was beautiful. And she's hiding it. Ashamed of it. But it saves her life. Maybe. But she believes herself condemned because of it. And she loses everything in an instant. There's enough here to come to conclusions, but there's also enough missing that you can fill in the gaps yourself in whatever way you want. Like, there's no, there's no indication that she believes that this is her punishment. But I can fill in the gap and say, I think that she believes that this is her punishment. The line that sticks out is, is the elated line. It, 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 it fits with a, a true believer in Christ, but she doesn't fit as a true believer in Christ. Uh, elation that, that your family has been released from their struggle. And believe that they, were, they are now in heaven. At the cost of one's own soul, perhaps. But that doesn't seem to be what she's thinking, and so this line confuses me. I do wonder, I wonder what it is in the manga. I have to wonder. Because the, the little, literal translation of what she says is hard to do, and then the translation that they went with for what she says seems off, so I'm just not sure. And the kids play as they pray, and they slice the bread. The simple answers that he gives are wrong, but they're so right. I mean, from a, a, a writing a realistic character and a realistic father trying to answer these questions, so right. He believes without knowing what he believes, and he explains without knowing what he's explaining. As it always is. It's a useful fairy tale. But the devil is here. The devil is on earth. Hell is here. And you've been living in it for a long time. This sequence is awesome. Oh yeah, that other sequence. It's at 6.30-ish. I want to see how they did that again. Because as far as I can tell, it's um, it's flat cells moving to create the like a parallax effect, illusion of movement. Mm. 
Wow, that is fantastic. Wow, that is fantastic. I think the most distinct one that you can see is uh, Torz's head. This entire section is one, one flat layer. That moves independently of his body. This is a layer back here. The edge of the ship is a layer. I think the floor is CG. This is fantastic. A really, really stunning thing to do. I hope that they they use that style more often because that's it's not something I can remember seeing before. Not in a show like this. Follow God's commandments. And she leaves, screams, falls to the ground. She's racked with guilt over this theft that she did, but she's obsessed with with it at the same at the same time. Ah, I put it on again. Vice and temptation. Mmm. Mmm. I think it's no accident that the pattern on it is wave-like. But it's also never brought up or stated explicitly. It's just the way that it is. It would have been so easy for her to say, This is my punishment. But she doesn't. It's left unsaid. I, I believe that she believes it. Though there's no evidence to it. That's so interesting. God would forgive me if I paid for it. The devil must have tempted me. The facial animation and characterization is so unique. And hell comes. The contrast of the warm and goofy inside and the the cold and brutal exterior. Hi, Bjorn. It's easy it's easy to forget when they're just laughing and joking around, but all of these characters are murderers, mass murderers. And have been for decades. This is what they do. It's a it's a tradition among the Norsemen, right? It's easy to forget that. And it makes it have so much more impact when it happens again. Because we feel betrayed by this. I do, at least. I like Bjorn. I still like Bjorn. How do I reconcile that? With who he is and what he does? Can't. can neither reconcile it nor separate it. That's a character. That's interesting. Wow. Um, I want to know what, what book these are from. I can imagine it being Noah saying this. It's Lamentations 522. Restore us to yourself, O Lord, so may we may return, renew our days as of old. We have become fatherless orphans. Our mothers are widows. We are closely pursued. We find we are wary and find no rest. Slaves rule over us. There is no one to deliver us from their hands. We get our bread at the risk of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness.
princes have been hung up by their hands, elders receive no respect. choice of quotes pretty incredible and the priest acts on his own trying to save lives and is beaten for it they don't even want this food but they need it and so they all die and call it mercy and they're not wrong But they didn't have to come here. But they did. There's no easy to, easy solution. It's an us or them problem. And a real one. In famine. In winter. Our characters were out of food. Running out of food. The village had food. Not even enough. But some but not enough to take and then let them live, they would have starved slowly. Ever so slowly and painfully. So it is a mercy. That doesn't make it right. This shot is so fucking good. One thing that's missing from from the way that we run through these, it's just it's just something that can't be helped unless I were to just watch through the episode again. Is the way that the shots flow into one another, the way that they build up the feeling of what may be coming. It's it's expertly done. This was beautiful. A beautiful tragedy of characters that we don't care about. The deep creases in his brow. Wow. Don't worry. And there's the axe. It'll all be over soon. They're Christians. And... I wonder if Anne will die out here in the snow. I would imagine so. Wouldn't it be interesting if she didn't? If somehow this action by Ashalad becomes his death. Because I have, I have this feeling that, that Thorfinn will be robbed of his revenge, but I don't know how or why. Wouldn't it be interesting if this is how? If she goes and gathers some people, tells them about this blonde-haired devil, Maybe. It's too far into the future. Too, or maybe not, but it's, it's too many layers of conjecture to make any sense. 
I think the only reason the backgrounds in this episode don't stand out as much as some of the others is because their you know, visibility is so low with the snow. And yet it's still beautiful in a terrible, terrible way. So she speaks to God. And of course God doesn't answer. But she keeps the ring. I half expected it, her to chuck it. But even now she keeps the ring. Because I am elated. Oh. She's been handling this guilt of her, her petty theft, for who knows how long, days, weeks. It looked like it was maybe fall when she was in the market. And now she realizes what human evil means. Maybe. I'm searching for an explanation for that line, and I'm not finding one. If you have theories or know what the manga was intending to say, please let me know in the comments. I would genuinely appreciate that. Please no spoilers, though. People who aren't afraid of your punishment. Just like the moment I stole this ring, feeling elated now. These backgrounds are gorgeous. She falls, but then she gets up again. This is the best episode of Vinland Saga to date. Maybe maybe the best episode of anything in months. Months and months. Long time. Wow. Wow. Okay. I I have to wrap this up. I don't think I've been able to do this justice at all. I've done what I can, but uh, this is something that sits with you. So let it sit with you. Think about it. I'll, I'll do the same. And I'll see you next week. I've been Tiabu. This has been Vinland Saga episode 14. I hope you've enjoyed or been pained by this episode as much as I have. And uh, yeah, I hope to catch you next week for the next one. Peace.